TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right, new music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. This is Central Texas Living with Ann Harder. The name Tom Wilson may not ring a bell with you, but he is a quite famous music producer who was born in Waco. There's a project underway. In fact, it's designed to bring the story of Tom Wilson to the forefront and perhaps lead to a much more prominent honoring of this man's talent and his contributions. Joining me now, Zach Burke and Mike Hamilton, and you both are part of a podcast series about this man, Tom Wilson. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Glad to have you guys here. Thank you, man. We really appreciate it. Um, it. It's Zach's baby, so I'll let him. <laughs> I'll let him talk about how this thing came to fruition. Uh, <laughs> yeah, tell me how, what got you interested. Now, you're a longtime radio guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you had you heard of him before? No. Uh, it's the way I came across him is very funny, at least to me. It was one of those days where. You know, you sit down, you're done with everything for the day, and you're just looking at stuff online. Uh, And I fell down this rabbit hole. I was just trying to think, you know, who is the most famous or who is, yeah, the the biggest celebrity from the Waco area? Everybody knows names that they throw out. Like, obviously, you know, Willie Nelson spent some time at Baylor. Steve Martin was born here. Or uh, I think Shannon, Shannon Elizabeth, the actress, went to Waco High and stuff before she left. So you have all these names. And I was just trying to figure out who was the it person. And through this list of everything, I found the name Tom Wilson, and it said producer. And I'm a huge music fan of all different genres and, and you know, uh, types from big band all the way up to now. Um, and so I wondered, hey, did he produce anybody I might have know, you know, have listened to or something like that? The, this might be a cool find. And when I clicked on it, and it pops up the Wikipedia page, and it's him in studio with Bob Dylan. That's the first picture you see. <laughs> and so immediately I'm like, well, hold on. Like I was taken aback a bit and I went down and I went through his discography and could very easily see what kind of hand he had on music, especially during the sixties. And then after reading all this, I was just more confused of why I'd never heard of him before. Cause he was a man who did so much, but until I stumbled across that one day, I'd never heard the name Tom Wilson. So how long ago was that? Two years ago, I yeah. Think. So this is a project's kind of been been percolating. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. For for a little while, um, Mike Hamilton is the uh, co-founder of uh, our founder and CEO of Rogue Media, right. and uh, which is you know where where we're sure. doing this sure. doing this broadcast. How, how did you get involved with this podcast? Project. So I've been helping Keep Waco Loud do uh, a lot of their projects for I don't know a little over a year. Um, and one of those projects is open mic that we do at Classy Glass downtown every Monday night, um, especially before COVID and all that. Uh, and Jacob from Keep Wickle Loud came up to me one night and said, hey, I think I've got this project. Uh, this guy named Zach emailed me, and uh, it's about this producer. He started laying these names on me like Bob Dylan, Frank Zappa. Um, Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah, Simon and Garfunkel. I mean, you're like, there's no way that came out of here. And so, <laughs> how could he um, be connected to Waco? I I have always yeah. been a real fan of like radio dramas and radio plays and mm-hmm. reenactments and things like that. And so, immediately my mind went to let's tell this story and then possibly interject reenactments and soundscapes and things like that. And so I was really thrilled about it, but I didn't you know I didn't know that anything would really come out of it. Um, and then all of a sudden it did. <laughs> we we, uh, um, we started having a couple of meetings and uh, everybody seemed to want to be involved in this thing. So um, we ended up uh, recruiting Lindsay Lipman uh, from Channel 25. Uh, she will be an executive producer. She has done um, great legwork on oh, this thing even totally. before 
even before we talked about doing a project. She is a dynamo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she is a yeah. force unto herself. So she's done interviews, I think, already mm-hmm. for, for this, as mm-hmm. you mentioning leg work. The, the original guy that she interviewed, what, what was his name? Do you remember? Oh. He was like the historian. Oh, the Erwin Chu said, the yeah. same guy that we talked to? Yeah, maybe that yeah. was him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had done a, an interview with him probably, what, three, four, five months before mm-hmm. we ever even started. Having and to do with her hip-hop doc? Yeah. yeah. And she just mm-hmm. had this thing in her back pocket, and we're like, oh, what? <laughs> that, that gets us started, you know? Yeah. And then since then, uh, she's talked to uh, some members of the family, mm-hmm. and uh, I believe she's gotten an interview with one member of the family that Texas Monthly could not get an interview with, which is it's already a leg pretty, up for pretty impressive. Yeah. yeah. There's been some stories mm-hmm. of Tom Wilson over, over the – over the years, but um, they're never real in depth. The guy is still kind of a mystery, um, and it's certainly a mystery as to why Waco doesn't acknowledge him. Well, it sounds like they just don't know about him. It was almost by chance you even figured out that he's from Waco. How how much of his growing up years did he? It wasn't like he Steve Martin born here and then yeah. immediately gone. Um, his his formative years were all here. Really? Uh, I've done enough research to find out, you know, where his parents lived, where their business was. His grandpa had, as Mike and I like to say this word a lot, a rug laundry. Rug laundry. Yeah. Um, that which I didn't know was a thing. <laughs> that is a thing. A uh, you know, I know basically a lot of this. I also was able to find out the connections of not only you know, his family, but he had his grandfather and uncles that were big here even after he left Mm -hmm. in terms of education uh, in the city where his uncle was the principal at Moore High School for 30 plus years. Mm -hmm. So I think he has another family member that has a school named after him in Kerrville. Mm -hmm. So a really um, studious uh, education was important family that still has roots here and has a lot in the city. And then he, when he got 18, obviously went to college and what he was able to do at Harvard kind of yeah, said. Yeah, not just college. He went to Harvard. Yeah, yeah, and, and, exactly. and, and the thing that's so crazy to me is that he sat there and he went to Fisk University, which is in Tennessee. And then after a year, I don't know if he just, I think he decided, hey, going to Harvard might be cool. <laughs> and like found a way to go there and end up graduating cum laude. So yeah. Okay. And so now he was born in 1931. Yes. And we're talking mm-hmm. about an African-American man. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. That decided, I'm going to go to Harvard. That That's it's breaking monumental. ground. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And to graduate, you know, ahead of his class as well. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It just, it, when you, when you. And, and how is it we just don't know about this yeah, guy? Yeah. That, that's, that's what I was going to say. As we're going through this, we're learning so much mm-hmm. that's not really documented anywhere Mm. um we learned some stuff from his family members we've learned some stuff i I tell you the weird thing is uh when he did die he died young um he was brought back here and buried in doris miller Mm -hmm. next to his parents but what's what's wrong with that the date on his gravestone is wrong the date of his death Mm. that weird yeah it starts to it starts to, to, to these clouds of mystery start yeah. you know forming, and so as a short run uh, kind of limited series, I can really see this turning into a you know I like to say that, that Katie and Jacob are kind of like Scooby Doo you know they've got the mystery machine and we're gonna go <laughs> we're gonna go find out what happened to this guy you yeah know? yeah. Well, we you mentioned um, Bob Dylan you, and several other ones. Let's mm-hmm. listen to the trailer for this podcast series that they haven't dropped yet. When mm-hmm. will they drop? So the first one is July. Oh, the, the first episode? Yeah. Mm-hmm. July 7th. Yeah, okay, July so it's coming up. Mm-hmm. It's, it's coming mm-hmm. up. Yeah, so let, let's listen real quick to, the, uh, to this, this intro trailer. Tom was Harvard educated, but he was streetwise too. When I met him, he was mostly into offbeat jazz, but he had a sincere enthusiasm for anything I wanted to do. Bob Dylan. The band never again had as good a producer as Tom Wilson, John Cale, The Velvet Underground.
Tom Wilson was a great guy. He had a fascinating ability to read the Wall Street Journal, have a blonde sitting on his lap, and tell the engineer to add more compression to the vocal all at the same time. Frank Zappa. He was a f***ing giant. And where's the acknowledgement? I like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but they're guilty of some insane omissions, and this is one. Marshall Crenshaw. I see a storm rolling through. is but a small example of giants of the music industry paying homage to the late, great Tom Wilson. Hi, this is Travis Scott, and I'll be your guide through this journey that will uncover the mystery behind this legendary African-American producer that was instrumental in defining the greatest generation of rock and roll. We will follow his path from Waco, Texas, to Harvard, to New York City, and eventually to LA, where he tragically and prematurely succumbed to a heart attack at the young age of 48. In this series, we'll shine a spotlight on some of the difficult questions surrounding his obscurity, such as his almost criminal omission from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and why the city of Waco has yet to embrace him as such an important historical figure. So strap in, crank up your headphones, and brace yourself for Invisible Icon, The Tom Wilson Story. This podcast is produced by Rogue Media Network. Our executive producers are Lindsay Littman, Zach Burke, Jacob Green, and Katie Selmer. Our director is Mike Hamilton. Our theme music is by The Bowler. Join us for the next installment of Invisible Icon, The Tom Wilson Story. It is. It that's compelling. I mean, it really is compelling to uh, to think about that. The people whose names you recognize from, you know, Frank Zappa, Herbie Mann, mm-hmm. you know, Bob Seger, a lot of these mm-hmm. musicians in a lot of different genre, really, mm-hmm. from folk to jazz to you know all, all kinds of all kinds of music that that owes so much to this one man, Tom Wilson. He definitely had his hand on the sound of the sixties. Is he was kind of a producer's producer. I yeah. mean, he was he was the guy that they went to, you know, uh, for for a limited amount of time. But he was the guy. The yeah. story I can't wait to get to when we get to the series is he was the producer on Bob Dylan's "Like a Rolling Stone," which is obviously one of his biggest hits. And just the things that happened in that session while Tom was producing are phenomenal to the point of where it's at. I, I, I don't want to give away too much because to me it's a great story. Right. Right. But the hand that he had. That and especially in Simon and Garfunkel, uh, how that could have changed dramatically um, or drastically. It's just it, there's there's some really great stories that we have. Can I say the one that that I like the most? Go that ahead. He produced? Yeah, go ahead. He produced the Batman theme for the for the uh, Adam West Batman <laughs> for the TV, TV show. show. Yeah, no, 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 no. There we go. We yeah, all yeah, know yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, well, let's talk a little bit about what what a producer does. I mean, I think one of the reasons we don't, you know, it's just one of those people in the background, very important what they do. But what is it that a good producer brings to the table? Mike, do you want to go? <laughs> I, see, it, it, it's funny because I think Mike and I both have uh, a lot of experience when it comes to producing. And you sit down and you do the best you can. But when somebody asks you, what exactly do you do? There's so many things you're a part of that it's hard to answer that yeah, question. Yeah, producer can can do everything from record uh, to edit, to gather the talent, to mm-hmm. wrangle talent, uh, which is different. There, there um, were a lot of times, I didn't mean to cut you off, but no. in the recording sessions that he had, like the other backing mm-hmm. uh, musicians are the people that Tom knew and brought in. So Dylan needed to record. He would need, you know, a guitar, an organist, all of that. 
Tom would go out and find the people to bring him in. So yeah. he was actually shaping the sound of the song already there too. You are, uh, as a producer, you are uh, everything from the guy who takes out the trash to the guy who produces the finished product, mm -hmm. or you can be. And uh, I, I think especially in audio, um, it seems like there is so much um, that comes up. Uh, even in my limited role here at Rogue, um, man, it's it's keeping up with the shows, it's keeping up with the schedule. Like I say, taking out the trash. I mean, it's it's everything. <laughs> it's it's yeah. everything. It, it really is. Yeah, keeping up with the talent. <laughs> yeah, it's keeping everybody happy. Honestly, keep, it can everybody, be. Yeah. So, so, what do you see as the long term goal? Of this project. Now, this is a limited series. Mm -hmm. So how many podcasts total? Eight, nine episodes, I think, is what we're going okay. with. Yeah. Quite yeah. a few. There'll, there'll be nine episodes. Dropped over a period of time. Over uh, It starts in July, and it'll end uh, that first Monday. I think it's the first Monday in September. Mm -hmm. um, the 6th is the anniversary of his death. And it's in the day September. after that. And, and just because Mondays are a good day to drop podcasts, that's when that final episode will be. And we've got some other stuff planned. Kind of too, put, to putting a putting it. a big bow on it. Exactly. So, so what kinds of, of other things do you have planned that you can talk about? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I've heard I've heard of a few. That's mm -hmm. pretty exciting. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this: um, we we as Rogue um, will recognize him in a big way. Mm -hmm. um, we have some exciting things coming up down the road that may be kind of. Uh, cross with when this happens. Um, and we're hoping to really give it a good send off there at the end. And I think the ultimate goal is to get the city to recognize this man in some way. So that, whether that's a place, a, a, a thing, a, a whatever a it is. A street name, a street, something. A statue, something. Yeah. And yeah. that was when I first started this and I first reached out to Keep Like Aloud, that was the main thing on my mind. Yeah is just recognizing somebody that came from the city that had such a big cultural impact. I mean, we already have some guys like that that it's great to have. Doris Miller, Jules Bledsoe, all also, you know, African-Americans who ended up doing great things after they left the city but were a part of it. Um, I think that Tom Wilson deserves the same. And if the city recognizes him, that's a huge win. If we're able to go past that and do more, that's extra icing on the cake if we could somehow figure out a way to get him into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But you have to start, obviously, at that's, the foundation. I the think big, that right yeah. there is probably the most shocking thing, is that someone who had this amount of uh, impact on, on these amazing musicians during that really pivotal period of time in the 60s, um, that he's not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So what, what needs to be done to get that ball rolling? You just got to make a phone call. No, oh, no is that I know. It? okay. Yeah, I mean, we we, we know some guys. It. Come on, it's a big deal. Uh, I think that it's the role of producer for the most part um, hasn't been looked on by some people in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as being an important role, but yet you see people like Phil Spector and others who were producers around the same time that are in there. So I don't think they're opposed to it. I think that it's the same as it is here that maybe everybody doesn't recognize how big of a hand he had right. and some of the musicians he produced. And I think just getting that story out there to everybody could change minds. And when you hear, when you hear some of the quotes from some of the big artists that say, we never had a better producer than Tom Wilson. I mean, how do you not consider him to be in the same arena as mm -hmm. Bill Spector and people like that? Or even when you have musicians who have, either knew him or have followed him and just become yeah. fans of him yeah. uh, post-mortem, the quotes they have about why they don't understand. People who are in music don't understand why he's not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame either. Uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty amazing it, it when, is. You, when you talk to, to bigger names. Mm -hmm. we, we've got one that we talked to. Um, I mean, I won't say his name, but but um, he he was a big deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is he's working on a project about Tom himself. And so he's he's huh. like a number one fan, you know. And to be able to yeah. sit down, I was able to sit down and talk to him last week mm -hmm. and just, mm -hmm. you know, go back and forth what he had, what I had. And it's great because I didn't feel the whole time that it was like we were competing to get something out as much as it was. We just wanted to be able to tell the story of Tom Wilson in so many different 
lanes of media to be able to get his story out there. Yeah, and when you say the name Tom Wilson to the right people, it really opens up doors uh, because they're like, yeah, I'm on board with you. He, he should be recognized. Um, so it's it's been it's been a heck of a journey already. Now, certainly, certainly more recognition is deserved in the city of Waco uh-huh. because of what he has brought to the table. You mentioned a lot of mystery still surrounding. Um, he, he died at a young age, what, 47? 47, mm-hmm. yeah. And, and the circumstances around it, his death, and so is that what's still kind of cloudy? Yeah, we, we don't know exactly when. We don't know um, exactly why. Um, we have our, our suspicions. Mm-hmm. But um, I tell you, when, when we first took this on, we were not even there, – there's so little information about him – and so little recognition about him that we didn't even know if the story would end up a good story or a bad story. Right. You know, we didn't know if the guy would end up being a good guy or a bad guy, honestly. Mm-hmm. We, we had our hopes, and we thought that, yeah. obviously, he would be. I mean, and We're sitting here talking about naming streets and stuff, and we're like, well, what if he's a <laughs> bad guy? You know? I've been a scoundrel. Yeah, exactly. Uh, thankfully for us, we haven't found anything like that, so I think we're good. Uh, but, yeah, it's especially just the 70s as a whole. His work kind of drops off. Mm. There's not interviews with him anywhere. He's not really attached to something. Um, yeah, it's just um, like he went poof. Yeah. Just, yeah. So it's, it, it, it is a real mystery, um, but I think it'll be fun. Mm, and he died in 1978, mm-hmm. right? So you were able to uh, talk to any of his family members? Any, any people still around uh, Central Texas? Uh, not a lot really here mm-hmm. in town, but he does have family still around. Um, and Lin, yeah, yep. Lin, uh, Lindsay was able to, uh, get a hold and talk to some of those family members, which actually cleared up a lot of stuff for mm-hmm. us mm-hmm. being able to hear him talk. Um, there's not a lot aside from that. Like it's, there's people maybe like we get told like, Hey, this person's here. And then I look for him and I can't find anybody. It's kind of those things. So it's just take it as you come to try to make it all work. But we do at least have contact and have made contact with his son which is huge yeah we we it, it's like putting a jigsaw puzzle together that you don't have all the pieces for mm-hmm. you know you're having to like make pieces as you go and so um i i, I think that we're going to end up taking some field trips mm-hmm. and uh making some phone calls we never thought we'd make and being in contact with people we never dreamed that we'd be in contact with so yeah have, it, have you talked to uh, bob dylan it, no uh, I have not <laughs> talked to Bob Dylan, but that's there, that's on the wish list. There, okay, there, it is on a very big wish list. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, your people can talk to his people, and maybe something yeah. can happen. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. When you start talking about Bob Dylan and and yeah. uh, Simon and Garfunkel and and folks like that, you know, that are still around, mm-hmm. um, why not dream big? Well, yeah, and and such a such a crucial part of their early careers that and those kind of. Those kind of relationships can make or break somebody's Mm -hmm. career. And when I see someone who dies young like this, you think, gosh, what he could have done. What what did we miss out on because he he left us early? But I think even dying at such a young age, the impact he had was still just Mm -hmm. super impactful. Uh, I mean, because not only did he produce the songs he did, I think that he caused certain musicians to be and have careers too mm-hmm. that people know now, obviously far and wide, but wouldn't be a thing if it weren't for Tom Wilson. And it may be an advantage for somebody like a Phil Spector or whatever, that he lived a lot longer, you know, and then those guys just kind of hung around. Um, but maybe not. I, 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 we don't, we don't really know. We just know the kind of impact we think he had and the kind of impact that uh, you see when you read through his discography, it's just, it's, it's enormous. Well, that, that's the thing. You have a web page, right? Basically it's, is that, did you, is that come out of your work? The, the web page on Tom Wilson that has his discography, it's, discography, it's I can't Irwin. say the word. Yeah. It's Irwin it's, that it's, we had talked about. Yeah. Uh, that's, oh, okay. that's what I came across next then after the Wikipedia page. Okay. And that's what I found. And I created a, like I emailed him back and forth mm-hmm. and the fact that he talked to me, and was stoked about it. And I just kind of kept that relationship going. And then a couple of weeks ago, Mike and I were actually able to interview him and just to hear the things that he talked about yeah. of getting all that together were so fascinating. Erwin is a guy who seems to get fixated on a subject 
and mm-hmm. just finds everything he possibly can. So he's got some pictures on this website mm-hmm. that are that are lent courtesy of Sony and and different different places. And then he's got the entire discography uh, that Tom did. And uh, boy, that is it's just been amazing so, names. Oh, it's been well, it's just been so impactful to mm-hmm. what we're mm-hmm. trying to do. You know, it's it's like uh, the the puzzle I talked about. Well, somebody just gave you a hundred pieces. You know that kind of thing. So it's it's uh, it's been a big deal. So. If somebody's interested in learning more about Tom Wilson, maybe mm-hmm. you know, leading up to the podcast, mm-hmm. um, how how can they how can they find out more about him? I mean, no no books written on him. I take it that he has like little just snippets in certain books that I've come across, mm-hmm. just about Texas musicians. But it's oh, like really? a, it's like a page long, and that's it. Um, there's the there's the Texas Monthly piece article. Uh, Rolling Stone did an article on him back in 2015, mm-hmm. right? And then, of course, there's Irwin's website. Which is TomWilsonProducer.com, yeah, I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. TomWilsonProducer.com. Um, and then um, if they want to listen to the trailer we listen to, it's certainly on RogueMediaNetwork.com. Uh, and there is a website coming. And as soon as we start dropping episodes, you'll get uh, notified if you go ahead and subscribe. So that would be the best way to keep yeah, up with it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's pretty exciting. I mean, it really is to to learn about this um, kind of groundbreaking work that you're doing about a man who really brought a lot of um, great ref- reflection on Waco and the fact that he's from Waco and was able to accomplish all he did for so many amazing musicians. No, it's definitely a huge thing when you step back and look at it. Mm-hmm. And the fact of it, too, is... Um, I talked to one of the guys who knew him when he was at Harvard uh, and then also worked with him because there's a brief period in there, and obviously we'll get into it more, where he started his own record label right out of college. Really? Yeah. And helped him with that. And he, the stories he told and the audio he told just about Tom as a man were just so great about he seemed like he was on campus there. And even though Tom was one of the only African-Americans there, you never questioned why he was there. He was always, he was very smart, very sharp, very funny, and knew everything he was talking about. And his love for music was fantastic. I think that's one of the biggest things to me is to find out who this guy was as, as, as a person. Mm-hmm. Um, why was he so influential? Um, did he get that from his grandfather? Did he get it from his family? You know, um, did Waco play a part in it? Did the church they went to here prepare yeah. him for things? And so oh, the music in the black church is certainly yes, something to be reckoned with. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, another point, just so I can add it in when we were talking about family and connections, his grandfather was on the building committee and the first committee for New Hope Baptist Church mm-hmm. and creating that. So and his dad was one of the choir leaders there. Yeah. yeah. So just so, so much history through the family. It's a pretty rich yeah. history when you start looking at it. Yeah. Well, it's it's exciting. It's exciting to hear about it and to uh, and to hear, you know, your your heart for this man you never met and um, yet want to bring honor and recognition to him. Uh, It's funny. I had a conversation with my wife the other day and I was just thinking about, and I told her, you know, aside from family members, obviously I think the person that I know most about is Tom Wilson, who's somebody not related, just the amount of uh, research (laughs) I've done there for two years. And, but, and she asked me, well, is there something wrong with that? And I said, no, not at all. Like I feel great being able to try to bring him some sort of recognition because I think he deserves it. Yeah. And it's a guy that everything I learn, the more I learn, because we're still learning stuff now mm-hmm. of putting the pieces, like Mike says, of that jigsaw puzzle together. That just drives me even more and realizes we're doing the right thing. Yeah. It does well, really feel that way mm-hmm. as we go through this. And I, I love to see how these collaborations are just kind of springing organically uh, that you know you you contacted you know our friends with uh, keep waco loud and and mike your involvement right. through rogue media uh, i was able to have uh, todd burtka with uh, yes. visitors and convention yes. bureau here in the studio and and you connect with him he'd never heard of tom I, wilson I definitely and gave him a to sales watch, pitch. exactly yeah. <laughs> when you're doing the elevator speech about who tom wilson was I mean, the look on Todd's face, he was just like mm-hmm. lighting up. Mm-hmm. And now you're having meetings with Convention it's, and Visitors Bureau. It's, it's pretty amazing. Um, so th- this is one thing that, that growing up in Waco, um, I left for a little while and then came back. It's always family that brings you back. Yeah. Um, 
I never thought I would live in a, well, number one, I wear this hat all the time that just says mm-hmm. Waco on it. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have worn that as a kid. I, I wanted to get out of Waco as fast as I could. Um, now I'm proud to be here. And it's, it's pretty amazing the growth I've seen and not only the things we're doing in the city, but the, the quality of people in this city. Um, it's just grown by leaps and bounds. And to be able to meet somebody like you and do a project with you, then keep Waco loud and, and convention and visit. I didn't, I wasn't going to do this when I was a kid, you know, this wasn't, <laughs> we supposed, couldn't to, have imagined wasn't it. supposed to have been a thing, but Hey, I'm, I'm here and, and it's, it's a very, very exciting. Well, yeah. And the, and more, more exciting things are uh, yet to come out of this. Yes, ma'am. I, <laughs> it's, I can't express the excitement I have. I kind of get, you know, like a little child who's just walked down on Christmas morning and see all the gifts that were kind of speechless. I'm so excited for us to be able to finally get this out. And for more people to learn about Tom Wilson, like that is something that just excites me every time I think about it. We have these Zoom meetings every once in a while, and it's like um, there's not enough time, not enough people, not enough room for all the ideas that everybody comes up with. And so um, that's a good sign to me. Mm, yeah, no kidding. Well, again, it's coming right up. And mm-hmm. uh, and Mike, what what are the websites? How can folks learn more? So again, go to roguemedianetwork.com, uh, click on the podcast itself, uh, subscribe, and that way you'll automatically get the new episodes as they come out. Uh, you'll also want to go check out tomwilsonproducer.com uh, for his discography and things like that. Uh, and then also on roguemedianetwork.com, if you want to join our newsletter, we'll give you updates as we come along to more information and more things and more websites and, I don't know, T-shirts, whatever. <laughs> oh, it, it's exciting. I mean, I really am. I really am pumped about what's going to be coming out of this and and how we're going to be able to, to recognize the work of Tom Wilson. Thanks to Zach. Burke, thank mm-hmm. you so much, and Mike Hamilton. Just it's all uh, Zach. It's all Zach. Just all, it, well, it's not all. It's not all. <laughs> I'm all I'm Zach. I'm just one of the cogs that helps this machine keep turning. <laughs> well, but but it's the fact that you know you had that passion for learning more about him, that curiosity. I mean, it's it's really great. To it see was it. it was that radio producer in me because you get <laughs> taught when you have to hunt down guests, you find ways to do it, and I was just able to do the same thing to hunt down info on Tom Wilson and bring everybody else along, and it's just. It's fantastic to see where we are now from where we were. Yep. Oh, well, thanks, guys, so much. Um, looking forward to the podcast dropping as we learn more about time. And the name of the podcast is? Go ahead. Uh, Invisible Icon, the Tom Wilson story. Yeah, yeah that kind of says it all. It really does. He's, mm-hmm. an, he's an icon and, and that nobody knows about. I think it summed it up perfectly. Yeah. Because he's a guy that's in a giant room full of, you know, people and he doesn't look like he should be somebody special, but the, you know, the effect that he had on so many musicians and music, it's, he's an icon for sure, but yet he's just kind of blends in with everybody. It's, yeah. I thought it was such a fitting name for it. The city, this city will know about him. Mm, I was going to say he, he's not going to be invisible for long and, and that's a good thing. So thank you both so much. Thank you. Central Texas Living is part of the Rogue Media Network family. Be sure to check out their other shows at roguemedianetwork.com. Please rate us five stars on iTunes and anywhere else you get your podcasts. Join us again soon for more Central Texas Living, the podcast. This has been Rogue Media Network Podcast.